King Charles shock new titles for Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. The King has embarked on a radical new strategy, and the fallout for Meghan Markle and Prince Harry is extreme. Royal expert Daniela Elza answers news.com.au readers' top questions on Prince Harry and Meghan Markle post-coronation, such as what they will do next and have they burnt all their bridges in the royal family. Welcome to Royal Pancakes. Please don't forget to subscribe and click the notifications bell, so you don't miss any updates about the British royal family. Generally when it comes to presents, the royal family has only a few sorts they ever give, one of which lend themselves to some hapless aid having to bother wrapping them, horses, dogs, gag gifts, like the singing big mouth billy bass that Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex famously once gave his granny, more horses, and titles. And getting a new one of the latter is generally a cause for celebration, a jolly present for a jolly occasion like a wedding or managing to make it to thirty years of royal duty and not once yelling at a snotty second grader at a newly opened scout hall when one has a dashed hangover. But Harry and his wife Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. They have, reportedly, gotten a new title from King Charles but it is no cause to pop the Krug and has definitely not been handed out in recognition of their service to Crown, country or the cottage industries of the Cotswolds. Rather, the Sussexes have been earned the label of the others in a big royal reshuffle, a sobriquet which makes it sound like they will never again be permitted on the furniture in Buckingham Palace's good rooms. The source for this particular morsel is the Daily Mail's Ephraim Hardcastle column. No Hardcastle actually exists, it's a made-up byline, however it's generally considered well-sourced. According to Hardcastle, four months on from Charles' coronation and debut go at not falling over while holding a scepter, His Majesty has been hard at work and has radically reset his late mother's concept of the family firm. His Majesty's move is far more than a decree than him just putting the kibosh on pilfering from the palace stationary cupboard. Rather, this reset has seen the king break his family down into four categories, senior royals, working royals, non-working royals and others, according to Hardcastle. And it is into that final inglorious group, the others, that the Sussexes have been lumped along with disgraced, ducal potato and the second worst Duke of York in history, Prince Andrew. Number one, by far and away, was James, Duke of York, later James II, who oversaw the Royal African Company, which monopolized the transatlantic slave trade in the late 17th century. Even here though, Harry and Meghan are coming off second best with Andrew getting preferential treatment over the Sussexes, per Hardcastle. He was allowed to join Edward at the one-year memorial service for the late Queen at St. George's Chapel in Windsor while Harry, on the same day, struggled to get permission to pay his respects at her tomb there. Dear Lord, this all must sting in certain bergamot-scented California environs. Say what you will about Harry and Meghan, and I'm paid too, but they have never, ever pulled around with a convicted sex offender or come to a financial settlement with someone who has accused them of multiple counts of sexual assault in a civil court. In a move that truly befuddles and confounds me, for some God knows reason that I struggle to fathom, Charles has clearly softened his attitude and stance towards his reputationally leprous younger brother. While earlier this year, the King had tried to oust Andrew from Royal Lodge, the 30-room bit of prize real estate he has called home since the Queen Mother's 2002 death, it now looks like His Majesty has surrendered to his pompous brother's intractability and refusal to downgrade. 